Hi everyone, Gig Coach Jake here back with more tips and tricks to help you maximize your earnings. Now today, as you can see by the backdrop, it's DoorDash. I want to help you make $20 an hour or more and there's some ways that you can do this. Yes, as always, it is market dependent. There are the few markets that are new or small where you're not going to be able to make this type of money. But for all those markets that you can, let's get right into this and talk about how you can make $20 an hour or more on a consistent basis with DoorDash alone. Now, the biggest thing, the number one, is plan. You have to have a plan going into it. Now, what do I mean with a plan? You have to know when you're going to work, right? And we want to work peak times. So, how do you know peak times? You need to take some notes. If you do not know your market, you're brand new, you're going to have to learn. Trial and error, right? You can also jump in some of the different Facebook groups and some other groups out there in social media to get some information that's specific to your market exact. Now, another thing we want to think about is days. Now, peak days, right? Now, they run a lot of these bonus pay times. We get notifications. So in the updates, you can find out when those are and you can start to plan ahead. You can see when they're paying more in certain regions, certain areas, or you can know when there are going to be a lot of drivers in another area because they are paying so high, right? You always want to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing because if you go where everyone else is, you're not going to make as much money. You're not going to get as many requests and you're not going to stay busy. Trust me on that. Now, what are some other things you can do? You need to go towards the money areas. Yes, if it makes sense and there's somewhere that's not too far away that you know that it's going to be a lot more lucrative, it is worth the trip. Trust me on that again. Now, you have to test this out, right? So again, you have to collect some data to make sure it's worth it. Now, if you're traveling half an hour, an hour, whatever it may be, you have to add that time on, right? So we're talking about hourly. You also have to add on the miles. So make sure that you are traveling to a money spot that it makes sense. Now, what do I mean by a money spot? I mean somewhere that's going to be a lot of offers and keep you very busy and also have higher paying offers, right? So think about like office buildings where people pull together and you end up with instead of a bunch of individual deliveries, you end up with one big delivery from all the people in the office building and they pitch in together and you end up with a bigger tip and make more money. That's just one example, right? So lunchtime. Now, thinking about dinner time, we want to be in an area in suburbs, right, where there's a lot of families, bigger orders, right? Bigger orders by default are going to lead to bigger payout because a default tip on there is 10%. So keep that in mind. Now, aside from planning, you got your plan set. You already know which days, what times you're going to work, and you're going to start to test and gain some data, or you already know from your market. The next thing you want to do is efficiency. The biggest thing to help you make more money is being efficient while on the road. Now, you may be asking, how can I be more efficient? Well, for one, shorter pickup and drop-offs, right? We, the farther we travel, you're wasting not only miles, but time. We cannot get wasted time back. So think about if you can knock out a lot shorter trips, think about like three miles, right? So three-mile distance, you can get a lot more done in a short amount of time. We're always fixated on the dollar amount with DoorDash. Yes, a lot of their offers are lower in paying, but... I couldn't tell you for every high paying offer I get on Grubhub, I'm waiting on average 45 minutes by the time that it's prepared, that I pick it up and then drop it off. This is not even including get to the next delivery, right? So with those bigger offers and bigger payouts comes the price. So keep that in mind. Now being efficient is the key, whether it's big offers, small offers, no matter what. So now knowing that DoorDash has a lot of smaller paying offers in the five, six dollar range, you just need to be closer and have places that are going to get the, the order done fast, right? So think about $5. If I need to make 20 per hour, I need to make four deliveries an hour. That's an average of 15 minutes. Now I track everything when I'm out there. Mileage, time, and I keep notes. How to use it? I use the Stride app. It's the easiest thing. I can plug notes in there. I can go back. I don't have to write anything down. I know which merchants by now would take forever, which ones are fast, what areas are going to be tough drop-offs. Now, you might be wondering, what's, what do you mean by tough drop-off? Think about like high-rise office buildings, right? So back to that office building. Some of those will come with a price. Now, if it's a small delivery and you know you're going to have to travel up and park and have to go to like 12th, 14th floor, it might not be worth it. Let it go. Acceptance rating is irrelevant. I could stress that enough. So if you have enough offers, you set yourself up for success, you're in a busy area, you're going to do just fine. Don't be afraid to reject. That wasted time that you're going to waste in there, 
you could have gotten a better offer by sitting and just waiting and saving some miles and gas. Now I talked about a three mile kind of rule of thumb. Use your own, right? Another thing we want to do is fast merchants. So now you know by now if you've been doing this, which merchants suck and which ones are really good. If you're brand new, again, you just have to take notes and find the patterns, right? So patterns are going to help you decide where to go, which to reject, so on and so forth. Now again, their merchants on a regular basis are going to have your offers done very fast, right? These are the ones you want to pick up at on a regular basis. Now, I have ones I can get done in 10 minutes based on that within three miles and a very quick merchant. I show up, they have it on a shelf or whatever, and boom, I'm out. I bag it, tag it, I'm gone and drop it off and onto the next. So really think about that when it comes to efficiency. Merchants are very important. Now all those ones that are trouble, you need to create a no-fly zone list. I actually have one of my notes of places that I refuse to go to or that I have an absolute minimum because I know how much time it's gonna take me on average. Another thing is stacked offers, right? So think about merchants that provide a lot of stacked offers because they get a ton of them. Now my market, Chipotle is a great example, Chick-fil-A both very fast. Chick-fil-A, they don't start the food till I get there, but they're super quick. So if I had a couple few, they're going to knock them out right away. I'm going to be in and out of that place and make some really good money. So that $5 becomes 10 and 15 really quick. And you get that done in 15, 20, 30 minutes. Easily you're making that 20 an hour. You see what I'm saying? You also want to avoid trouble spots. Now, anywhere that you run the hiccups before, again, back to that no fly list. Mark it down, just reject. When you get any offers, don't even worry. I actually laugh and I reject and I say on to the next. If you end up in a situation where you're going to be waiting forever, maybe they haven't put it in yet, they were super rude, I don't know what the circumstances are. Don't be afraid to reassign. You have that buffer, right? You just need a 70% and above on your completion. So do not hesitate to reassign bad situations and get out of there and move on with your day, right? Think about how they can really affect our mood and our attitude when we have a, just a crap situation with some of these merchants, right? I just move on. We're independent contractors. Exercise your right. Resign. You can do that. They can't hold you hostage on any offer. I can't stress enough how much this feature will save your day and a lot of headache. And again, busy areas, right? So, lunchtime, think businesses. You can go on and look on the map and the customer and see where all the different merchants are, right? You want to be in an area where there's a lot of merchants, right? The hotspots. Yes, we can use that hotspot, but again, everybody can see those hotspots and they're going to migrate to them. Think about it like a, a light for a moth, right? Or bugs. Sorry, not calling you all bugs, but it's going to attract everyone there. So you kind of got to create and find out some of your own hotspots based off testing out and work in your areas. Another tip for efficiency is shorter dashes. What I've noticed, I know another YouTuber put out, put the video, I refuse to put a video on this because I do not like exposing glitches because what happens? These companies eventually see these videos, they get that information, they go fix the glitch. So if you run shorter dashes, you will get more offers. I've been doing this for a long time. I will log on and I will do the very minimum dash that I can. If it's busy enough and you're working peak times, you should have no issues getting right back on to another short one. You will get so many offers, it's insane. You do those longer dashes, you realize you're not getting as many offers. You wanna know why? Well, for whatever reason, in the algorithm, when you have a shorter dash, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, they're gonna cram a lot of offers your way. So, test it out yourself and see what I'm talking about, right? So, collect that data and see. But shorter dashes are very key in getting a lot of offers and being successful. The third and last tip is cherry picking. You have to cherry pick in this business to be successful. These companies do not care how far we travel, how little money we make. They don't care, right? They just want the offers delivered and they'll put as many drivers on the road to get it done. And it doesn't matter what you make at the end of the day. You're not their employee. They don't care whatsoever. So with that being said, you're a business owner. You have to be very smart, track everything and treat it like a business to be very successful in this industry as an independent contractor. Otherwise, these companies will take advantage and run you over. So acceptance rating is irrelevant. So when DoorDash, it doesn't matter how low it is. I've been as low as 0% over and over and over. I get plenty of higher paying offers. I do very well, get plenty of offers in general. There's no timeout, none of that crap. And scheduling, 
Who cares? And DoorDash, you don't really have to schedule. It isn't like Grubhub where you're on a block or anything. So, for the time being, some of these companies like to monkey see monkey do and change things around. But, back to cherry picking. What can you do? Merchant. So, I can cherry pick based on merchants. We talked about no fly list, right? Distance. One of the things I can do is distance. I know some people gave me a hard time that they said it's impossible to do $1.50 per mile on their market. Perfect. No problem. A dollar per mile is a great standard to use. So, when you see it, it's $6. You see there it's six miles or less. Okay, no big deal. Again, we want to have shorter distances. Think about three miles or less, right? So, you can again, distance, cherry pick. There's many ways you can cherry pick. The number, the item count. You can see how many items on there. That gives you a great idea, especially if you know the merchant, right? So quality merchant, go on that customer app and look at some of the price counts on some of these different merchants. Give you an idea of the average dollar per item, right? So say that I get six items in one place and it pays out $100 the bill. Again, the default tipping is 10% on DoorDash. So $100 bill, I'm probably gonna get $10 tip plus the $1 from DoorDash. Now, there's a lot of deliveries where they paid me out a lot of money when there was zero tip. So for all those that are bashing, yes, they do have a lower sliding scale. I have another video coming up with a lot of evidence and data I collected that really shows they're not so bad. Uh, I was one of those that chastised and called them out for, for stealing tips indirectly and other things. But they're really not so bad after all. Could they pay more so we can make more than 15, 20 an hour like we do on Grubhub? Absolutely. They do need to raise that pay a little bit higher, but a lot of situations where there's zero uh, tip, we get paid out higher. So, back to cherry picking. That item count, you can have a place where it may be 12 items and the bill's 20 bucks, right? Think about some of the Taco Bells. You'll have all the hot sauces or different things on there. What you can do, if you get fooled and you accept and you go in there, you wanna go in and look at the information, see what the bill is, see what the items are, right? If it is a good paying bill, by default, 10% tip. So on average, think 10% of that bill. So $200 bill, you might get $20 plus the $1 from DoorDash. So $21, that's pretty sweet. Now I know they had this floating widget that was actually be able to see the payout before you ended. I hope they bring that back. My market did see it, but I saw some of the other ones. I'm not gonna touch on that too much more until they bring it back. But they did test something where you could see the total payout, what you're actually gonna make, before you even did the delivery, after you accepted. So, back to the, the bill total. And reassigning. If you get duped, and you see that it's like 12, 20, 30 bucks, and you just know that that payout, that guarantee what you saw, the five or six bucks, you're not gonna make any more, you can reassign, right? You're an independent contractor, you have that buffer, right? So, 70%, you can do that three out of 10 times, and be safe and not get deactivated for it. Think about that, keep that in mind, right? You're a business owner, keep control of your business. Don't let these companies control and manipulate you. I hope all these tips helped. You need to plan, right? Number one, you need to go into every week with a plan. Think about peak times, peak days where you're gonna make the most amount of money. If we're working a lot of times and hours and in areas that don't produce much, how do you expect to make much money? You have to set yourself up for success. Number two, efficiency. You have to be efficient in everything you're doing when you're out there on the road in those times that you schedule. And the third, last but not least, cherry pick. You have to cherry pick to be successful, even if it's a little bit, right? I'm not saying you have to have zero, one, two percent acceptance rate, but you have to be more selective. Be picky especially when it's busy. When it's super busy, be pickier. When it's not so busy, you can't be as picky, but you can be efficient. Wasted time equals wasted money that we cannot get back. I hope this video helps you all make a lot more money. Be safe out there. Watch out for all these crazies on the road. And as always, work hard, but work smarter.